First of all, I want us to look at Rahab. It's so shocking to see Rahab, and the Bible says it plain, the harlot, is mentioned in Hebrews chapter 11. She was a harlot. She was a prostitute. She, in our modern times, would be a stripper or a dance, a, a, a lap dancer. And that's very plain and, 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 rude, and rude almost to say that in a public audience. And yet God put that detail so that he could say to anybody listening to me that there is nothing in your family's background that is more powerful than God's grace and God's mercy. And it doesn't matter where you came from, God can turn you and your family into heroes for his kingdom's sake. Because Rahab didn't just get in Hebrews chapter 11 as a harlot. When you find her in Matthew chapter 1 in the genealogy of Jesus, it doesn't say the harlot Rahab. It just says Rahab. What happened? Grace covered her past and grace took a messed up dysfunctional family and made them cause Jesus Christ to play a part in Jesus Christ coming into the earth. You remember the story of the two spies. Everybody say two spies. The two is the number of witnesses. The Bible said in Corinthians that out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word must be established. So Two has to do with the fact that they were coming to her house and they realized that the king was on to them. They were spying out the city of Jericho before Joshua and his army took it. And when the king heard that there were strangers in the city, they knew they had to hide and they came to the harlot's house and they said, we are here and we need you to hide us in your house. And she said, let's make a deal. She said, I will hide you in my house if you will give me what I ask you. And she could have asked for money. She could have asked, asked for titles. She could have asked for property. She asked for none of those things. When she was able to ask whatever she wanted, notice what she asked for. She said, I want you to save me, and I want you to save all my household. And then she starts naming it in Joshua. She says, I want you to save my fat, my father, my mother, my brothers. My... Isn't that something? A prostitute has the audacity to say, I know my family's messed up. I know I'm bad. I know we have a terrible reputation. But if I take you in, you represent the promise of household salvation. And if I hide you in my house, if I hear the word that says me and my house can be saved and I dare take you in and hide you. You got to promise me that you will save not only me, but I want all my family, all of them in the house saved. And they said, you let us out of this window with a rope and tie a scarlet cord on the window that you let us out of. And then notice what they said, get your family in the house and make sure they stay in the house. Your job is to fasten the cord. That word fasten means to nail it down and then make sure you keep your family in the house. All she did to be a family hero was got, she got her family in the house and the house represents church. And God says, you are raised to hero status if you can get your family in the house. Because in the house, there's miracles. And in the house, there's protection. And in the house, under the blood, the red scarlet cord, there is salvation, there is deliverance, there is freedom, there is all that you need. But you got to get them in the house. The parents... Your job is to get them in the house. Church should not be optional. Church is not something you hit, skip, and miss. Church is not something that is the lesser of the priorities. This is life or death. This is talking about your family making it to heaven. What could be more important? Soccer isn't more important. Ball games aren't more important. Nothing the world has to offer is more important. When you know that your family is saved and you are saved, you are a hero and you are a success. No matter what else you don't do, if you do that, you are a success. 
in God's eyes. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure that you subscribe to our channel so that you can get notifications on new posts and live streams. Be sure to share this video with a friend. You never know how you can send the Word of God right when somebody needs to hear it. And you can use your social influence for good, for the glory of God. Thanks again. Share it with a friend. And I really appreciate you watching. We'll see you next time.